Hi, I'm Trevor Lund, and this week's Pastor's Minute, we're going to talk about how to do a Daniel fast. So you want to know how to do a Daniel's fast? Well, it's something that can really change your life. You know, it's not as, as intense as a full fast, and yet if you do it over a longer period of time, you get a wonderful result as well. The secret to it all is do it as a fast. Do it as unto the Lord. What you're doing is uh, you're not just basically you're taking on a vegan diet and uh, there are a lot of vegans out there i got one living in my home that it, it wouldn't make a difference in their life because that's how they live and if you do it for a longer period of time that's exactly what's going to happen it's not going to make a difference because that's how you live let me just explain to you first of all what why we call it a daniel fast there's two places in the book of daniel that talks about them limiting their food the first comes from daniel 1 12 to 14. it says please test your servants for 10 days give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see this is daniel and uh, his friend shadrach meshach and abednego who didn't want to eat the meat and the the wine that was on the king's table that all of the young men were getting and uh, so they were tested in it and they were found they, they look better than all the other guys so they they were able to just eat vegetables and drink water the uh the rest of their time of training now the second one and this is more of a fast the first one wasn't a fast it was more of a test second one is the fast daniel is praying for an answer and he says i ate no choice food no meat or wine touched my lips and i used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over so no no choice food uh eliminates stuff that you enjoy uh no meat eliminates meat uh no wine touch my lips eliminates the wine now uh, no choice i uh, use no lotions i'd recommend that you would use lotions you know take a shower use deodorant use the lotions um <laughs> came clear in the new testament under jesus that when we, when we fast he said don't fast like the hypocrites do so that everyone knows that you're fasting just do it just do it and uh, god will see it and so that's kind of what we want to do with that so how do you do a, a how do you make this spiritual if you're just changing your your attitude or just changing you know just changing basically what you eat I do recommend you eat less than you normally would because you want to feel those hunger pangs. I'll tell you why in a minute. But uh, here's how you do that. Uh, first of all, avoid distraction. Like Consider limiting or eliminating TV, radio, video games, and especially social media if you're onto social media. Um, those distractions, I mean, they're great ways to, they're, they're good things to have. But when you want to devote time to God, get rid of everything that separates you from him and these might be things that do that secondly choose to worship god through sacrifice of love uh, and to, through sacrifice and love to those around you more than you usually do like practice generosity wherever you go and <laughs> think about that think about it as you open up doors for people or think about it as you leave bigger tips than you normally do or think about like that's part of the process of a fast uh it was very clear in isaiah's time that that's the fast that god wanted he said you just you just rend your heart and not your garments um is what it says in isaiah i think 55 no it's in there 55 56 57 somewhere in there Maybe back the other way. I'm trying to re remember where it is in my Bible. Anyway, um, third thing, pray. You're going to pray during the fast. You're going to pray about three times more than you normally pray. Make that as kind of your goal. Uh, also, set time aside daily to listen to God through his word or in conversation to him. I haven't gotten into how you have a conversation with God. But basically, one thing you can do is uh, take a notepad and, and um, write down your question to God and then write down your your thoughts after that <laughs> as if God is responding to you guess what he actually can speak that way and it's it's a cool writing exercise that actually can have some very important spiritual significance um, but talk to me if you want more information about that uh, it, 
plan to do it about when you're fasting plan to do about double what you normally do if you do have daily prayer time a daily bible reading time plan to spend more time with god if you listen to god for five minutes a day you know double that if you're reading for 15 minutes a day you know double that for the time you're fasting maybe do it in the morning maybe do it in the evening as well or however you do it this is entirely up to you this is between you and god uh, five, you, you want to ask and keep asking, knock and keep knocking, seek and keep seeking. That's what it says in Matthew 7, 7. Uh, literally how that it's the aorist form of the verb and we don't have it in the English. And so we just say, ask and shall be given you. Seek, keep, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. But uh, the aorist form makes it ask and keep asking, seek and keep seeking, knock and keep knocking. And so what you're doing, you're, you're asking for guidance, you're asking for answers, you're asking for help, you're asking for deliverance. Maybe you want to quit a bad habit. Maybe you want to start a new new season in your life. Maybe you want to, to draw closer to God, and that's what you're doing. Uh, that's what a fast is for. How to start a Daniel fast, that's practicalities, let's get down to it. Number one, you eat lighter meals for a few days leading up to the fast and reduce your intake of caffeine. Uh, start out a couple of days ahead of time uh, because coffee is not addictive, so the experts tell us, because it activates a different part of your brain than other addictions do. But they, you go through the same withdrawal symptoms with coffee <laughs> if, you're, if you're a coffee drinker. Um, so, and, you know, you're going to have headaches with this if you're, that's what you're doing, okay? <laughs> Next, um, how, uh, two, plan how you're going to eat. A short rundown of acceptable foods, uh, all fruits and vegetables, all legumes, all uh, whole wheat, grains, nuts and seeds, tofu, herbs and spices. Uh, there's lots that you can eat, and that's what I'm saying. If you just get into this pattern, if you don't make it a spiritual thing, it's just going to be a different way you eat. Make it a spiritual thing. You want to avoid all meats and animal products, all dairy products, all deep sea, deep fried foods, all solid foods, all solid fats. Um, yeah, bacon's off the table, guys. You know, fasting in scripture is always about limiting food. You know, we can fast from TV, and that's fine. It's a, it's a legitimate thing. But in scripture, it's always about food. Controlling your body helps bring your soul in alignment with your spirit. Some of you are diabetic, and you're like, I can't fast because I'm diabetic. If you stick to your what you need to eat as a diabetic, you're fasting. <laughs> it's that easy. Um, you know, at the start of whenever you fast, there's... A, there's um, Whatever's deep inside you begins to bubble up. That can be frustration. That can be anger. That can be, you can be short with people without knowing why. Uh, you know, I was driving to out, out of the city today and, and every street I went down, they were cleaning this, they were, they were cleaning the streets. You know, only in Edmonton do they clean the streets Monday morning after a break. I cannot believe what these, you know, and I'm like, okay, that's the fast talking. It's not me. I'm glad the streets are getting clean. Thank you, God, for that. Turn it over to prayer when those things start to happen, okay? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Expect to have headaches the first few days if you're drinking coffee a lot. That's why you want to limit it ahead of time. Those are going to pass. Like, don't give in to what your body is telling you. That you need to have caffeine, or you need to have that food, or you need to have that meal. It, you don't. You really don't. Um, use the hunger pangs or the temptation for coffee to remind yourself that you're drawing closer to God. One. And two, uh, use it as a reminder to pray. You know, fasting should always be a life-altering experience. You know, it should take us from this level to that level. It should, it should change things, the way we think, the way we act, the way we behave. It draws us closer to God, and, and we, we want to be closer to God. As long as we're not doing it for our own show, as long as we're not doing it, say, hey, look at me, look at what I can do. <laughs> Enjoy. Have a great week, Harvest, as we gather together for prayer, and uh, as we seek God, we, I know he's going to give us some amazing answers.